And I want us to look at a topic the grave could not hold him. Tuangalie katika somo ya kwamba kaburi halingemshika. And I want us to read Acts chapter 2 verse 24. Tutasoma matendo ya mitume 2:24. Acts chapter 2 verse 24. Matendo ya mitume 2:24. As you turn to your neighbor and give them a high five. Unaposalimia jirani yako. You turn behind and look at them and give them a high five. <laughs> and you can ask them for their names. Ask their names. Then you can tell them, neighbor, you know your security is my security. So let us take care of each other. So to shirikiane pamoja. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verse 24. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be held by it. I read it again. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be held by it. Matthew 27, verse 17 to 26. Matthew 27, verse 17 to 26. Matthew 27, verses 17 to 26. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor, governor said, why, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him him. Now, um, the story that we are reading in Matthew chapter 27 is what happened on the Friday of the first Easter weekend. This is what happened. Jesus was arrested. And all these things happened, including the beatings that he was beaten with. He was taken to Pilate so that Pilate would be able to judge him. But Pilate looked at him and after interrogating him, discovered that he was an innocent man. Yet the people insisted crucify him. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus was, God, was the father's plan for redemption. Yesu alikuwa mpango wa baba yetu kuhusu ukombozi. When the enemy had deceived Adam and Eve, wakati adui ambaye alimdanganya Adam na Hawa, he thought he had won. Alidhani ameshinda. And so he walked away out of the garden of Eden, akatoka katika bustani la Edeni, feeling like hurray finally I have won. Akisema ndio nimeweza kushinda. These people who were created to live 
in the garden of eden whereby the garden of eden represents the presence of god watu hao walikuwa muomba waishi katika bustani ya edeni ambayo ilikuwa ina inahusisha uwepo wa mungu the devil thought because i've succeeded in deceiving them shetani akajua kwamba nimeweza nimeweza kuwadanganya it is all done imeisha hapo they will be destroyed wataangamia why was he doing this alikuwa anafanya hivyo kwa nini because he knew the goodies that exist in heaven alijua mema ambaye yako pale mbinguni he was one of the cherubs from the beginning of time alikuwa mmoja wapo wa makerubi pale mbinguni and so having rebelled and having been thrown out baada ya kukataliwa na kuondolewa pale by god himself na mungu mwenyewe he never wanted any one of you and i to enjoy the glories that exists in heaven hakutaka mimi na wewe tupate kufurahia utukufu ambao uko mahali pale and that's the reason why he walked into the garden of eden na ndiposa akaenda katika bustani la edeni and decided to deceive uh, adam and eve in that garden na akawadanganya adam na awa katika bustani ile and when the fall happened and they ate the fruit that was forbidden baada ya kula matunda ambayo yalikuwa yamekatazwa the devil thought finally i have won na shetani akajua yasa nimeweza kushinda and he must have gone back feeling now he is a conqueror na alienda akijihisi yeye ni mshindi but it's worth noting this morning that god had an alternative plan lakini asubuhi leo mungu alikuwa na mpango tofauti a plan that he had had from the beginning of time alikuwa na mpango mwanzo kabla ya wakati and so even as we are celebrating today it's because of the plan that god had instituted from the beginning of time tunaposherekea leo ni mpango ambao mungu alikuwa nao kabla ya mwanzo praise the name of the lord amen and god's plan will always work na mpango wa mungu lazima utatimilika god's plan will always come to fruition lazima mpango wa mungu utakuja kutimilika whereas it's also worth noting na pia si tunafaa tutambue that the enemy is constantly also working 24/7 na pia adui anafanya kazi usiku kucha and so when the fall happened na ule mwangu ambao ulifanyika and adam and eve were driven out of the garden of eden na adam na awa kafukuzwa katika bustani ya edeni the bible tells us biblia tuambia that there was a judgment that was pronounced at that time kulikuwa na uamuzi ambao ulisemwa wakati ule and god spoke and said there will be the seed of a woman na mungu akasema kutakuwa na mbegu ya mwanamke who will crush the head of the serpent ambayo itagonga kichwa cha yule nyoka and it's at that point that the serpent realized it's not yet over na hapo ndipo adui akajua kwamba haijaisha kamwe. God has already pronounced something here. Mungu ametoa hukumu fulani hapa. And he knew that there was going to be a son that would be born and that's the reason we celebrate Christmas. Na akajua kwamba kuna mwana ambaye amtazaliwa na deposit na sherekea Christmas. He knew that this son of God was the one that God was referring to as the seed of a woman. Na akajua huyu mwana wa Mungu ndio Mungu alikuwa anahakikisha kwamba huyu ndio mbegu ya mwanamke. And so he started being alert. Na akakuwa makinifu sana. He knew that there would be a time and because most of the prophecies were talking about the son being born in Jerusalem akajua kuna wakati na kuna unabii ambao umekuwa umetolewa pale Yerusalemu being born in Bethlehem to be precise kuzaliwa pale Bethlehemu he decided to rally all his demons around the holy land around Bethlehem just to keep on checking where could this son be born na akatuma maejenti wake pale kutembea na kuangalia huyu mwana atazaliwa wapi and many times this is not in the scripture it's just my thought eh ni mafikirio yangu haiko katika maandiko keep thinking that's the reason there were so many people who were demon possessed like the demoniac of gadarenes na ndiposa mimi nafikiria kuna mambo wao watu wengi walikuwa wamepagawa na mapepo sana because the demons who were always spying the land the holy land in wait for a son to be born mapepo yale yalikuwa yakitembea yakiangalia kipeleleza mji wote one thing that the enemy did not know kila mbacho adui hakutambua was what kind of a family this son was going to be born ya kwamba huyu familia atatoka katika familia gani and definitely the enemy the devil knows biology na kwamba adui anajua biolojia. He knew that the pregnancy will have to go for 9 months. Na akajua kwamba hii mimba itakuwa ya miezi 9. And so maybe he kept on checking from time to time the families or the, the very um, prominent families that were in existence in the Holy Land. Na akaangalia zile familia ambazo zilikuwa kuku pale zenye zenye kubwa ambazo zilikuwa zikatika hiyo mji ambao ni mtakatifu. It never occurred to him that God would have used a teenage girl who had never known a man. Na hakujua kwamba Mungu tumia binti ambaye hajampata mwanaume yeyote and so he never garrisoned around the teenage girls who were uh, who were, were betrothed by any man at that time so hakuwa anapeleleza kuhusu mabikira walikuwa waliokuwa pale mahali he never at any 
everyone point thought that the king of kings the son of god would be born in a manger na hakufikiria kwamba mtoto wa mungu atazaliwa kwenye nyazizi la ngombe because he knew that the heavens were a glorious place a place that you cannot describe with words alijua mbinguni ni pale pa utukufu hauwezi semeza tu kwa maneno the bible tells us that the streets are made of gold na biblia tuambia kwamba vijiji vitatengenezwa katika dhahabu dhahabu he had walked on those streets na ametembea katika malango yale it tells us that the walls are made of jasper na ukuta umetengenezwa katika jasper jasper is a mineral i don't know which mineral but i believe it's a, a very powerful one and as uh, an expensive one ni madini ya bei ghali sana So Satan knew all these things. Adui alijua mambo hayo yote. And so he knew the glories, the beauty, you know, the kind of standard that God lived in heaven. Alijua ile kiwango kiwango ambacho Mungu ameishi pale mbinguni. Brethren, let me tell you this one thing. Wacha nikwambie kitu kimoja. That heaven cannot even be compared to Runda. Ya kwamba mbinguni hauwezi linganishwa na Runda. Because those are the places we normally feel are very high in the current dispensation. Hizo ndio miji ambazo tunadhani ni ziko katika kiwango cha juu nyakati hizi. Heaven cannot be compared to the US. Yeah, uh, mbinguni hauwezi linganishwa na Marekani. Because many times when people are going to the US we start saying the Lord has blessed them mightily. Wengine tukiapoenda Marekani tunasema Mungu ametubariki zaidi. As if when they were in Kenya they were not blessed mightily. Ni kama papa hapa Kenya hakuna baraka za za kiwango hicho. Why do we say that? Because our imagination for those who have never gone there, we imagine the US is a splendid place. Ni kwa sababu sisi mafikiri wetu wale ambao hatujaenda tunadhani mahali pazuri sana. But I want to bring it to you today here. Lakini nataka nikwambie leo hapa that heaven is way much more beautiful. Ya kwamba mbinguni ni zaidi ni rembo zaidi kuliko Marekani. Than the, the American or the European states that we keep thinking about. Kuliko hizo nje ambazo ziko pale ng'ambo. And so the devil knew what heaven looked like. Na adui alijua mbingu inakaa namna gani. And so from the time that it was pronounced. Na wakati ambao kulitoa kulitangazwa that there will be a seed of a woman who will crush his head. Ya kwamba kutakuwa na mbegu ya mwanamke ambaye itagonga kichwa chake. He kept being on the alert. Akakuwa amemakinika sana. He kept moving back and forth. Alikuwa akitembea akiangalia. Maybe from one prominent home to another. Kutoka katika nyumba moja hadi kingine. Trying to ensure that this plan does not work. Kuhakikisha kwamba mpango huu hautafanya kazi. Concentrating his work in Bethlehem and in the Holy Land. Akiangalia pale Bethlehem. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He never knew the time hakujua wakati just like you and i do not know the time of the coming of the lord jesus kama mimi na wewe hatujui atarejea siku gani he never knew the time when this son was going to be born hakujua mwana huyu atazaliwa siku gani otherwise had he known the time he would have been more careful kama angejua wakati angekuwa angemakinika zaidi praise the name of the lord amen and so the, the lord god decides to send a jo gabriel na mala, eh, Mungu akamtuma aka malaika Gabrieli into a lonely home katika eh, familia ambayo ni ya chini finds this teenage girl whom we are told was between the age of 14 and 16 akapata aka, aka, huyu msichana ambaye alikuwa ni miaka 14 who was promised in marriage to Joseph ambaye alikuwa ana mchumba wake Yusufu remember it was a promise they were not living together with Joseph ilikuwa tu ahadi hawakuwa naishi pamoja na Yusufu and so the angel Gabriel appears malaika Gabrieli akamtokelezea in their compound katika eh, nyumba And just like many teenage girls who are normally sent by their parents maybe she was sweeping the compound Kama tu wasichana wadogo wanapofanya kazi pale nyumbani walikuwa akishughulika tu Oh maybe she was washing the dishes I don't know Alikuwa akiosha vyombo But the angel found her alone Lakini eh, malaika akampata peke yake And the angel gave her greetings Na akamsalimia And called her favored Na akamuita yule ambaye anakibali And as she stood she wondered what sort of greetings are these Na akasimama akashtuka salamu namna gani hizi You find that in the book of Luke. The beginning of Luke. What sort of greetings are these? And immediately the angel announces the na, promise na malaika akatanguliza ile ahadi you are favored because you are going to carry the messiah uko na kibali kwa sababu utambeba messiah and at the end of the day na, mary say let it be done to me according to your will lord na mshowe maria akasema wacha ifanyike jinsi alivyosema bwana and mary was overshadowed by the holy spirit and she became pregnant na akajaza na roho mtakatifu na akashika mimba i want to imagine it was kenya today wacha nikifikirieni hapa kenya leo and there's a young girl who has gotten uh, pregnant na kuna msichana mdogo ambaye ameshika mimba and uh, she is not yet married na yeye hajaoleka and mamas begin whispering na wamama wanaanza kunongonezana bwana yesu asifiwe amen 
And they are like I have been seeing we've been seeing her with Joseph. Nilikuwa tukimuona na Yusufu. Inaonekana ni Yusufu amefanya kikitu hapa. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so as she walked she was walking feeling a uh, the feeling of shame definitely was upon her na alikuwa na ile hali ya kuwa na aibu the feeling of rejection was definitely with her ile hali ya kukataliwa ilikuwa pamoja naye as she moved from their home into the home of elizabeth alipotembea kutoka kwake akienda pale kwa elizabeth she must have been feeling rejected alingehisi kukataliwa the husband to be was feeling like rejecting her mjumba wake alikuwa karibu na mkataa and so yes she is pregnant ndio yuko mimba but because of what is surrounding her kwa sababu ya hali mazingira yaliyo kati yake the enemy cannot even at one point think this is the one carrying the messiah ya adui haezi fikiria huyu ni yule anayebeba mezaa praise the name of the lord amen and so the story continues na hadithi kaendelea and the, the the lord decides to do something extraordinary na mungu akafanya kitu ya kipekee the bible says inasema in the book of proverbs kitabu cha midhali in the book of proverbs midali that the heart of the king ya kwamba roho ya mfalme is normally in the hands of god iko katika mikono ya bwana he is able to turn it anaweza kuigeuza he wants jinsi atakavyo the, the king's heart is in the hand of the roho wa mfalme uko katika mikono ya bwana like the rivers of water kama maji ya mito he turns it wherever he wishes anaipeleka anaielekeza mahali anapotaka point wakati ule God decides to make the king Mungu anaamua kumtengeneza mfalme to call for a census ili aite watu wapige kura Bwana asifiwe Amen to call for a what a census watu wafanye hesabu ya kwa so that Mary and Joseph ili Maria na Yusufu can be able to make their way to Bethlehem ili waweze kwenda pale Bethlehem and noticed na, na bila kujulikana because even as they traveled there must have been a traffic jam kwa sababu walipokuwa kienda kulikuwa na msongamano maybe there were so many donkeys that were carrying many pregnant women kulikuwa na na mingi sana ambazo zilikuwa zimebeba wanawake ambao wako mimba as they went for the census walipoenda kuhesabiwa and just imagine na kumbu, eh, how could the enemy even think that one of these pregnant women how could he even choose one and think it's the one who was carrying the message adia angetambua namna gani kwamba kwa hao wote ni huyu ambaye amebeba mfalme so the enemy is still busy possessing people out there adia alikuwa akiendelea kuwashikisha watu pale nje yet the messiah is making his way into bethlehem lakini messiah naye alikuwa akienda njia yake pale bethlehem praise the name of the lord And so Jesus is born. Na Yesu akazaliwa. And when Jesus is born, anapozaliwa, he is born in Bethlehem. Anazaliwa pale Bethlehem. He is not born in the Radisson Blu. Hazaliwa haja, pale Radisson Blu Hotel. Or Kempinski. Ama pale Kempinski. As the devil was waiting. Jinsi adui alipokuwa kingoje. But he is born in a manger. Amezaliwa kwenye zizi. How could the son of God be born in a manger? Je, mwana wa Mungu anazaliwa kwenye zizi namna gani? It was all planned so well. Ili pangi kavema so that the purposes of god could be achieved ili makusudi ya mungu yatimilike at that point the enemy is still busy doing other things na wakati huo adui anaendelea kufanya mambo mengine but the son of god is being born lakini mwana wa mungu aiyozaliwa some place in bethlehem sehemu fulani pale bethlehem just like the prophecies had said kulingana na unabii and to welcome him on earth na kumkaribisha duniani it is the shepherds who were out watching their flocks at night ni wachungaji walikuwa pale nje wakiangalia kondoo zao usiku who received the message from the angels waliopokea habari kutoka kwa malaika and they go welcoming na wakaenda kumkaribisha and before too long na kabla ya muda the enemy gets a shock of his life na adui anashtuka because the maga is coming from the east na wale majuzi kutoka pale mashariki are coming and they are announcing wanakuja wakitangaza that there is a son the king has been born we saw the star in the east ya kwamba kuna mfalme amezaliwa mashariki tumeona nyota pale mashariki and so herod is shocked na herod akashtuka and the devil is also shocked na shetani pia akashtuka and in my small imagination i'm imagining akauliza where was i when he was being born akauliza nilikuwa wapi alipokuwa anazaliwa praise the name of the lord amen And so when the time of crucifixion came to cut the long story short wakati wa kusulubishwa kulipofika and uh, the devil thought now i am going to make sure this son of god is also dead once and for all naenda kumaliza huyu kabisa kabisa praise the name of the lord amen if the devil knew the plan that the lord god had kama adui angejua mpango mungu alikuwa nao jesus would not have been crucified yesu 
Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so on that Friday, Na ile ijuma, with agony, katika uchungu, with pain, kwa uchungu, he was flogged. Aikapigua. He was beaten. Aikapigua. He was ridiculed. Aka, 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 he was ridiculed. Akadhihakiwa. Akadhihakiwa. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He was spat on. Akatemewa mate. And ultimately he said, Na it is finished. Imekwisha. What was finished? Nini macho kilisha? It was the work that he was sent to accomplish. Nile kazi ambaya liitu haifmalize. It was finished. He had come to set you and I free. He had come to make sure you can no longer live under a curse. He, he, he had come to take the rejection that was meant to be yours. And so when he said it is finished, it meant you and I can walk in freedom. Because we are no longer rejected. We are no longer ridiculed. We are no longer on our way to destruction because it is finished. The work that the Lord, God had sent him, God the Father had sent him to come and do was already done with. It was finished. And he went into hell. And for three days he was there. My small imagination tells me for once the devil thought that he had won. And so he could have drawn all the demons that were possessing people and he told them there is a bash in hell. <laughs> and he drew all of them and they were all in hell because they thought that they had won. They thought they had conquered. But on the third day, tell your neighbor on the third day, <laughs> on the third day, Jesus emerged victorious carrying the key to death and to hate. That key that the enemy was using to lock you under curses, he picked it from the enemy. That key that the enemy was using to lock your life, your destiny, he picked it from the enemy. That key that the enemy was using to ensure that you are not living Living to your full potential, he picked it from the enemy. He did not go and tell them tafadhali nipe. He went and picked it from the enemy by force. So that you and I can be free. Whatever he had done was finished. And so he was going to finish up everything even as he died for the three days. He picked the key and he kicked the enemy out of his home. Because the Bible says in the book of Revelation that he holds the key of heads. He holds that key of even the home where the enemy is supposed to be living. In other words, the enemy is out of his home. It has been locked. He is out of his home. He is clothless. He is naked. And therefore, we are not going to live feeling the feelings of fear in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He rose up on the third day. He rose up on the third day. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You can turn to your neighbor and tell them he is alive. Jesus is alive. And what does it mean when we say he is alive? When we say he is alive, it means we can live a life of freedom. It means we can live a life of victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The grave could not hold him, Captain. They put a stone at the entrance of the tomb. A big stone. Because they were 
afraid that the disciples were coming to steal the body. But even when the disciples were not there, the angels came and rolled the stone away. Because the grave could not hold him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The grave could not hold him. And the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, in the book of Matthew, let me just check on it. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, I don't know whether it's verse 52. Mm hmm. And the graves were opened. The graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. In, in other words, when he rose up from that grave, he did not rise up alone. There were people who had died. And the Bible says here that the graves were opened. And the saints, just put it up again, the saints who were inside the graves, those who had fallen asleep, were raised. Let's read verse 53. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Amen. So the graves of those people who were dead were also opened at the same time when Jesus left the grave. And as Jesus went into the city, the Bible tells us that he did not go alone. He went together with the people who had resurrected. Amen. You could be here, but the enemy has been putting you in the grave. The grave of depression. The grave of lack. The grave of pain. The grave of sin. I want to bring it to us this morning that because he conquered the grave you have no business being in that grave it is time for you to arise and come out of the grave because it has been conquered praise the name of the Lord Amen. because he already conquered it you have no business stay there in pain Yet the door has been opened for you to walk out and become free. The enemy cannot hold you captive because the very chains that were used on you, the very chains that he had tied you with, Jesus went. He broke those chains from you and he went and he is currently using it in on your enemy. He is currently using it on your enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The grave could not hold him. Many times as Christians, we are born again. But we are born again. But we live in fear. But we live in bondage. But we live in discouragement. I came to tell a brother and a sister here this morning that it is no longer the same because Jesus is alive. He is alive that you may live. He is alive that you may walk in freedom. He is alive that you may walk in victory. He is alive that you may walk in salvation in the name of Jesus. Amen. The devil does not know the mind of God. The devil cannot be able to know what you are uh, what, what your future looks like. The devil does not have the attributes of God. He is not omniscient. He is not omnipotent. He is not omnipotent. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. He is not having Ye, the attributes of God. Many times we keep saying, oh, the devil, oh, the devil. You know, we want to attribute everything that we are going through to the enemy. I want, I want to tell you, we lift him beyond where he is supposed to be. The place he was meant to be in the first instance is under your feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If you have feet, please do this. Now, up or under, that is the place where the devil was supposed to be. He should not be in your house unless you open the door and allowed him. He should not be at your workplace unless you open the door and allowed him. Because Jesus is alive, in case you had opened the door for him, Today, Leo, as you go back home, nyumbani, open the door like this. Mlango, stand at the side of the door and tell him, devil, shetani, I have discovered a secret. Siri. You can no longer be a part of me. Kuwa sehemu yangu. Pick your things and leave. Vitu vyako na because this place is under new management. Kwa mahali hapa, kwa kuna mpia it sana. is under he who is alive. Yiko chini ya ula mbae, yiko hai. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because he is alive, he has defeated sicknesses and diseases in the name of Jesus. You can walk to him irrespective of what the doctors told you. Did they say you have cancer? Did they say you have diabetes? Did they call it its terminal illness? We have the healer. He may not have had a medicine degree but he is the healer. The Bible tells me that he opened the eyes of the blind. The Bible tells me that he was able to heal the woman who was double bent that day. The Bible tells me that he was able to deal with an epileptic, an epileptic boy that day. Today I want to present to you not only a risen savior but a healing savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He is a healing savior. If there are demons that have been bothering you because there are times when we are Christians we are born again but demons keep bothering us. There are some that visit us in the hours of the night. I want to tell you that he is a deliverer. He delivered in the days of old. And he can deliver today. Have you been tormented? I want to present to you a risen deliverer. He can be able to deliver you in the name of the Lord. Those demons that keep visiting you when you are asleep, you can be set free from them because Jesus is alive. He is able to deliver from LGBTQ. <laughs> he is able to deliver from drug abuse. He is able to deliver from alcoholism. He is the deliverer. He delivered the demoniac of Gadarenes. The one who had demons that were full inside of him. That when they were cast out, they went into a herd of pigs. He can be able to deliver you. We call him the risen deliverer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have you been groping in darkness? Not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Not having one who can hold your hands and walk through this journey with you. I want to tell you that Jesus saves. He saved in the days of old. And he is saving today. So I can present to you today the risen Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He is our King this day. He is our Redeemer this day. He is our Healer this day. I do not know what category you are in. He is our Lord this day. Praise the name of the Lord. He is our Lifter this day. He is our Healer this day. 
We call him Jesus. Tunamuita Yesu. We call him Jesus. Tunamuita Yesu. As we are coming to the end of this. Tunapoelekea mwisho wa haya. I know we had the ministry time. Najua tulikuwa na wakati wa kuombewa. I know we have been prayed for. Najua tumeombewa. But maybe you are there you were never prayed for. Lakini uko pale na haukuombewa. When people were walking into this place. Watu wakati watu walikuwa wanakuja mahali hapa. I have presented to you. Nimekuonyesha. The reason deliverer. Wila ambaye mkombozi ambaye amefufuka. I have presented to you. Nimekuonyesha. The reason savior. Mkombozi ambaye amefufuka. I have presented to you this morning. Nimekuonyesha asubuhi ya leo. The reason healer. Mkombozi ambaye anaponya. And I have presented to you. Na nimekuonyesha tena. The reason Lord. Bwana ambaye amefufuka. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. As we rise up on our feet. Tunaposema kwa miguu yetu. And we are going to do the same song Kaburi ile shindwa. Na tutasema huyo wimbo ambao kaburi. Kukushika shujaa. You are that person whom the doctors have told things. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. You are that person whom the doctor has told many things. You can just dash and get hold of this altar and tell the Lord. Because you are the reason healer. I have come. Nimekuja. You are that parent who has a child. Wewe ni mzazi uko na mtoto. Who is getting lost? Yeye ambaye anapotea. The times I normally tell the devil you know what? Na mengi adui unajua nini? When I was going through labor pain for my two children you were not there. You never labored. Wewe haukutia pale uchungu wa uzazi. So none of my children is getting lost. So hakuna mtoto wangu ambaye atapotea. I don't know whether there is a woman here today who is telling the devil you never labored. Sio kama kuna mwanamke hapa anaambia Mungu haukutia uchungu. Mine is not get lost in alcohol. Wangu hawataingia katika pombe. Mine is not getting lost in drug abuse. Wangu hawataingia katika mihadarati. If you are there you can just rush and get hold of the altar. Kama uko pale unaweza kuguza madhabahu haya. Of the horn of the altar. Katika madhabahu haya. And plead for your child. Na uombe mtoto wako. Because the reason the Deliverer is in the house. Kwa sababu mkombozi ambaye anaponya yuko hapa. The reason the deliverer is in the house. Yule ambaye amefufuka mkombozi As you come to the altar the ministry team will just come and lay hands on you as you're holding on to the altar. Kama unaguza madhabahu haya wa huduma watakuja wa kuombe pamoja pale. Maybe you are there as I spoke. Uko pale vijiti vya ongea. You are the one whom I was saying the demons keep visiting you. Kama ni wewe ambaye yule mapepo yanashinda akiandama. Na been hearing lately there are some who are even sleeping with people in the night. Kuna wale ambao wanaota ndoto kama hizo. Uh, uh, it comes to an end today. It comes to an end today. We are decreeing and declaring that it is an end of being 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 oppressed by the wicked one. In the name of Jesus. Jesus cannot be alive. Yesu haezi kuwa hai. He cannot have finished it. Haezi kuwa kimaliza. And we still live being being tormented by the enemy. Lakini bado naishi kunyanyaswa na adui. No 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 he is alive. He is alive. Yuko hai. You are there you are not born again. Uko pale na haujaokoka. I want to beg on you to come. Na kuomba uje. His hands are open wide. Mikono yake iwazi. And he is saying my beloved son. Anasema mtoto wangu wa My beloved son. Mtoto wangu ninayempenda. My beloved daughter. Binti wangu ninayempenda. I love you. Ninakupenda. And I'm willing to save you today. Na niko tayari kukukomboa siku ya leo. Oh, shekara bayandoro bosita yana.